Hi, hello, welcome, or welcome back. My name is Freya, I'm a knitter living in Glasgow, Scotland with my wife Karina and my two cats Kiska and Monique. Um, it's been a long time again. <laughs> I say that every time, so I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, so yes, let me start off by saying the boring bits. <laughs> I put everything in the description box below. I will have timestamps to every section slash every like garment or finished or whip object. Um, I have my measurements right at the bottom of the description so if I say I knit a size 2 then you can look at my measurements and see what a size 2 looks like on somebody with those measurements. Um, yes. So. Okay, I was, but, but. <laughs> I'm gonna start by saying why I've been away. So if you're not interested in life outside of knitting, jump straight into the knitting. Um, I often do that too, so I won't be offended. <laughs> but I thought I'd just, if anyone is interested, I thought I'd just say. So um, I have a mental illness and PTSD and all of that fun stuff and I have been doing therapy and um, it's been quite intense recently if anyone's interested I'm doing EDMR mixed with like mindfulness stuff and, and stuff like that um, so if anyone has been through EDMR <laughs> you know that it's quite an intense form or way to go about therapy um, so that's been a lot. Um, I've also gone through phases of like not knitting at all, um, for well, getting quite bored of like all the yarns that I can afford and and really just yearning for <laughs> for nicer yarn, but obviously not being able to afford that with like cost of living crisis, etc. Um, and just, I, I went through a big phase of struggling to think about what to knit and all of that stuff. Um, but for the past like week-ish, I've, I've found a project and it's, it's got me going again. <laughs> so I am back and with a lot to show. Um, I also thought that I would, um, add in a little extra bit saying what um so my therapist has been doing a lot of mindfulness with me and i thought i would um link below the couple of videos that she gave to me to do which is mindfulness meditation um and the guy that does it is actually one of the like founders is that the right word like the guy who invented um, mindfulness meditation, one of the guys that did it um, and it's really good because it's like backed up by medical people kind of meditation instead of like maybe somebody that guides a meditation that hasn't got qualifications in it. I don't know, for me knowing that it came from like a scientific background, um, you know, it's definitely the best ever mindfulness thing that I've done which has really helped me so I thought I'd leave it in the description if you're interested and to see if it helps you. Uh, it takes a lot of practice and it's quite frustrating at the beginning <laughs> but I've been doing it for like three months every day um, and it's slowly starting to click so, <laughs> so there you go. Um, okay. I probably missed out a lot of stuff there, but let's just jump in to the knitting. I have on my notes here, as per, um, a lot of things to go through. Um, I'm going to whiz through a couple of things from, you know, I'm just going to say what it is, what it's made out of, how I liked it, etc. And then just move on because there's just so many things. 
I'm going to spend obviously time talking about you know the big projects and, and all of that so let's just start with what I am wearing which is the Elizabeth Elizabeth Blows by Petite Knit. Um, again oh I've got a new phone <laughs> so if the quality is better that's great <laughs> but I also cannot see what I'm filming Um, I've got a mirror behind the camera but it's also blocked by my phone <laughs> so I can only vaguely see what you can see I'm gonna stand up and see if maybe you can see this better so um, this is it this is the back <laughs> if you can see anything um, where are my joggers? <laughs> so I knit, let's see, refer to my notes. I knit the size two on a four millimeter needle and I got gauge, which was 23 stitches. Um, I've not written down, down the row gauge. I actually think my row gauge was smaller, so I had more rows per four inches and she says in the pattern and um, but I always go off the stitch gauge because I, I know how to like change the row gauge to fit my measurements <laughs> if that makes sense. So I knit the size two and um, let me show you the yarn that I used. So um a while ago when drops had um a sale of the um mohair I grabbed a bunch of the chalk colour which is like a bright white like um it's not like a creamy white it's more of like a if anything cool grey toned white um I've got a ring light there which is on like a a natural almost orange light so it's probably gonna warp all of the colours um but you can go and look online to see what this looks like um, and I held it together with um, oh, <laughs> with Ching Fibre Fjord um, in the colour Snow. So this is a fingering weight yarn, um, this is the label, a fingering weight yarn, it's 80% lamb's wool and 20% nylon and it's 466 meters per 100 grams. This is ethically sourced and sustainably produced in China. Um, it's a non sleep wash as well. Um, they sell, I, I'm sure they sell this as like a sock yarn. Um, I, a while ago when I was putting in an order, I grabbed just one random ball in a different color to try it out. Um, I actually didn't try it out before I bought this <laughs> but um, so thoughts on the yarn first why not um, I like it it's good because this is a thin I would say this is a, this is a light fingering so held together with this um, it got gauge if I was to use like a true fingering I would I wouldn't have gotten gauge so that's good um but so it feels kind of I, it doesn't feel great um it's it's soft but when i was holding it together with the mohair it's it's almost like it didn't it, it wasn't like bouncy or stretchy and when you hold two yarns together that act differently it gets, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, but it gets like, oh, I don't know how to describe it, but it's kind of awkward when two different yarns act differently and you're trying to hold it together and you're pulling from the skeins and it's pulling at different tensions and stuff. So that slowed me down. Um, but I do like the finished garment, but this colour of the drops kid silk isn't the softest and this isn't the softest either but I can definitely tolerate this on my skin Um, maybe if you're more sensitive than me you wouldn't be able to tolerate it as much but for me it's absolutely fine 
but it just doesn't feel really luxurious and I know that Patina knit this um, in cashmere and oh, I'm so jealous I would love to have knit this in the cashmere I think her version is a lot more flowy and um, you know it has got a lot more drape whereas this one is relatively stiff and it's not really got any drape I don't know how much you'll be able to tell of that it does work well for the collar because obviously it's got structure um, so this is, you start at the top, it's a double knit collar and you just knit back and forth for the collar and then what do you do? <laughs> what do you do? So it's a raglan so you knit the double knit like, um, what would you call that? Tabs? At the same time as doing the raglans and uh, then you split the sleeves just like a normal raglan um, which is great because at the end you don't need to go back, pick up stitches and knit a collar or anything like that. When you're done, you're done, which I love patterns like that. Um, so that's great. I love the construction. Um, oh, one thing that I did change for the size two, I'm sure it says to knit the collar for nine inches. I knit it for ten inches um, because I've seen other people's like... I don't know if you'll be able to see that. I've, I've seen other people's lie like this and I wanted it to lie folded over. So I thought if it's, if it's longer and there's more fabric then it will do that and it did do that. So that's great. I'm really happy with that. Um, one big thing that I changed was the rate of increases on the raglans. So for the pattern, um, you would, let's see, <laughs> if I was to follow the pattern, um, the raglan would finish right under the armpit. I am not a fan of that at all. I hate that. I need some. <laughs> I, I just can't have fabric under here. One, because I just hate the feeling sensory wise, but also like if I'm sweaty or anything like that, that's not a nice feeling of sweat on wool. Um, so I'm just, I'm not a fan. So I made that longer, but also because my row gauge was smaller, I had to add in extra rows anyway. And honestly, I must have added in uh, like maybe an extra 20 rows. Um, so I added in plain rows between increased rows um, at different rates throughout. Um, I don't, there is actually a name for that um, when like a traditional raglan you just increase every other row but um, there's a, a name for raglans where you change the rate of increases to get a better fit. Couldn't tell you what it's called but that's essentially what I did. Um, so that was a big thing that I changed. I did um, a couple more increases um, at the cuff just to get a tighter fit of the cuff. I don't really know why I did that because I'm not really a fan of like skin tight sleeves but I think it works um, so that's what I did. I don't know why I did that. Um, I knit the body for 17 and a quarter inches. I knit the hem for two, two and three quarter inches. Um, that's all I've got written down. It didn't use a massive amount of um, wool or yarn, so that's good. Um, I like that. So altogether, this was a pretty affordable project because the the Ching Fiber Fjord is seven pound fifty per a hundred gram skein. I only needed three skeins. Um, and I needed five skeins of the kids silk um, which works out pretty well for me. Um, one other thing, I'm just looking at this and remembering what happened. Um, another reason why I was annoyed at this yarn 
Um, I'm trying to find a section. I, I don't know if this is going to show up at all. Maybe there are little... No, you can't see it at all. There are little splodges of bright purple, like speckles, when there shouldn't be. This is like just um, no variation, one colour yarn. And because this is white, it stood out so much. I managed to catch the second time a splodge came up and then I, I was kept I kept on cutting out those bits, adding the yarn back, and then I'd knit like half a row and it would happen again. So I abandoned one of the skeins or cakes um, and started on a different skein and it wasn't in that one. But that meant that, you know, one, I was cutting the yarn all the time, thinking, oh, it's just one little section, it'll be fine. And two, that like renders like I think it's this is like 50 grams and all of this skein has little purple splotches so that like renders this like not useless but I have to be cautious of what like project that I put this in because obviously it's a white like if I'm wanting like a clean crisp professional project then you know I'm not really going to use this but if I'm wanting like maybe a pair of socks that's absolutely fine to me that they're going to get dirty anyway <laughs> but um so that annoyed me because you know yarn to me any yarn is expensive like this is an expensive hobby there was fibre there by the way um this is an expensive hobby so you know to get yarn that's you know that was putting purple splodges into my project that really annoyed me because I spent a lot of money <laughs> and also every skein instead of being a hundred a hundred grams it was all of them were like 95 grams so if you're really counting on um there being you know the right amount of yarn in these hanks um don't <laughs> they are all and I, I've um used this yarn again for another project um yeah don't count on that they are all five grams under which is another thing that annoyed me and I was like oh because you know 15 gram like 15 grams is a lot of yarn like what's that like five grams is like maybe that's like 70 meters left less than what I should have got which goes a long way um, in projects um so that also annoyed me I did actually um email them because I was like look there's purple splodges in my yarn and they're all underweight uh they never replied so that's great um I don't know if they read it and maybe they're gonna take that on board and in future they're gonna check you know the weights and and the you know if there's any color splotches in them but um yeah so that is the elizabeth blouse i i don't know if i said <laughs> but i absolutely absolutely love this i think it's one of those knits that um really doesn't look like it's handmade which um some people might not like some people like the fact that things look handmade i do too but I, there's also something so like satisfying about making something that looks so professional that you could have bought it in like a high-end knitwear shop. Um, there's something nice about that. Uh, so yes, I love this and I would like to knit another one. It did take a long time, but um, it was worth it in the end. And I would love to knit another one of these. Like it's just... You can put jeans on, put this on, and it just elevates anything to look more, like, put together. <laughs> um, which I like, because um, I'm quite lazy when it comes to thinking of what to wear. So if I can have, like, one or two pieces that I just put on and it makes an outfit, that is perfect. <laughs> so yes, let us move on to my next finished object. 
Now I'm just gonna sort of breeze, not breeze past this one, but um, not talk a lot about it because it is a self draft by me. I've not cut my ends yet. <laughs> so this is, um, so I did a test knit. <laughs> Trying to show it off. I did a test knit for Jessie Maid um, and it was the Northwoods V-neck jumper. It, um, it's stripy like this and it has a big V-neck. Um, if you've watched me before you would have seen it. Um, I made it in black and white stri stripes thinking it's going to be like Scandi chic and black and white stripe jumpers are, are really in at the moment. Um, but when I made it, I was just like, this is a little bit too prison um, and a little bit too punk for my style now. So I gave that to my little sister who is very punk and very stylish like that. Um, but I absolutely adored the gauge of this, uh, of that jumper. Um, so I wanted to make myself one, um, but I wanted to make one that um, was a warm jumper. So I wanted to omit the v-neck and turn it into like a crew neck. So I started to look at the patterns and go, right, I'll change those little things and it'll make it into a crew neck. And then I was like, well, if I'm changing those things, maybe I'll, um, change a couple of other things to make you know the perfect fit and one by one thinking of the things to change I was like I'm going to self draft all of it so I took the gauge from the Northwoods v-neck and that's it I self drafted everything else so this is um, Drops Flora in various colours, held together with drops brushed alpaca silk, which gives a really, really lovely gauge. It's um, heavier than Flora held together with kid silk, because the brushed alpaca is obviously thicker, um, but it's not too heavy that it's like a chunky um, sweater or jumper. Um, which is perfect for, um, this is like around the house kind of a jumper, um, warm, snuggly, put on around the house, which is perfect. It, this jumper fits me perfectly. It's amazing. I love it. Um, and these are the things, the design elements that I put together. So we'll start with the back because you start, that's where you start knitting. I'm not sure how much you can see. Let's show this bit. So, start with a cast on, then you're knitting short rows back and forth to get that, is it a trapezoid shape? I don't know. <laughs> um, and so I did that, then I picked up I did more short rows, did I? No, I didn't. I picked up, just knit, knit, knit. Um, obviously did the crew neck. Um, and this is a drop sleeve, so I knit, joined in around, knit down, um, did the ribbing. And then for the sleeves, um, for me, I absolutely love it when sleeves have short rows to create like um like a faux satin sleeve kind of a look so I thought I'm gonna do that um so that's why this top stripe looks like a triangle um one thing that I love about the fact that this is striped is it it really accentuates the design elements um, I am a big fan of construction and different construction and really showing that off because it's kind of what 
um, sets apart handmade knitwear and shop made knitwear because you know in the shops it's more often than not machine knit and for a machine knit you can't do raglans you know you don't often get short rows like that or, do you know what I mean like I really wanted to make the most of what hand knit garments can do so that's why you know I love the fact that the stripes really show that off I think it's so cool um and yes I fit this completely to my body, to my measurements. I love that. I put elastic in the neckband, it fits amazing. But <laughs> because I love it so much, I really wanted to get nice pictures of me wearing it before I wore it. I finished this months ago and I still haven't done that, um, which I'm annoyed at, but I'm, I think I'm just gonna start wearing it to be honest. Um, life's too short isn't it and also I really loved self-drafting this because it meant I could really fit it to my body I didn't have any constrictions and I just went for it but I'm not interested in <laughs> pattern designing or anything like that um I really struggle with like replying to messages and you know taking on responsibilities and stuff so to do like a test net to get this graded professionally if I wanted to like to get this what's the not like what's the word like proofread that's not the word um you know professionally looked at and gone over and all of that you know that takes money I don't have money um I have <laughs> a mental illness um which it takes up a lot of mental energy um, so it's just too much uh, so so I, I don't really need to take pictures so that I can put it in the pattern and really show off you know what the finished jumper looks like um, so I don't know what I'm waiting for I think because I know that um, the, the brushed alpaca really doesn't wear very well, it pills, it, it does start to look worn. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to keep it so like new. <laughs> but it's gotten to that point where I'm like, I'm just gonna wear it. So there we go, that's that. Let me put that there. Moving on to, okay, let's move on to the Stockholm slipovers. I did put one of these at the end of my 2022 like roundup slash what I knit in 2022 um, but obviously I haven't spoken about it on a podcast and I knit another one after that so I'm just going to show both of them right now. I have them hanging up here so let me start with this one. This is the one that I showed in my 2022 video. So this is the Stockholm Slipover by Petite Knit. Oh. I knit a mashup of sizes one, two and three. Um, so I took different measurements and stitch pattern, stitch counts um, to get things like a deeper v-neck, to get you know the right bust measurements, um, the right armhole measurement, um, body measurements. So I really like picked different measurements and stitch counts and put it all into the one garment to get a good fit. I got the perfect fit in my opinion. I could maybe have done with like four less, four less stitches on the body, and also I'll show you on my other one. But do you see how that? the armhole sticks out like that um, in my other one I remedied that so that annoys me on this one but I did fix it in my other one so the yarn that I used was Woolly Knit British Foreplay is that what it's called? in the colour smoke which you can only get on Hanks I believe and I used Rico Essential Kid Mohair in the colour grey 
Um, this is great because it hardly uses up any um, yarn, so you can afford to like get nice yarn for this. I just happened to have the woolly knit left over from a cardigan that I made. I made the cottage cardigan by Jacqueline Seaslack, um, and I had to buy an extra script, an extra skein because I ran out of yarn like right at the end. So I had like loads left, and so I hung on to it, and it was the perfect amount for this. So I'm really happy about that. I also got the mohair massively, massively discounted. So this really only cost like less than twenty pounds, maybe fifteen pounds, um, if you really, you know, work it out per like how much I actually used. I only used just over two um balls of mohair, so I have like pretty much a whole ball left, which I'm gonna use for some accessories, maybe some gloves, because it's a really nice colour. Um, so this is um, knit at quite a loose gauge. For context, um, I knit my cottage cardigan, which is the same, essentially the same makeup of a strand of woolly knit, ball ply, and a strand of mohair on a size four millimeter needle, which gave me a really really nice fabric. I, I that's my favorite cardigan right enough I that that's like my only cardigan <laughs> but one of my favorite pieces because um this color um of the woolly knit is my favorite color that I've gotten from them my other ones have kind of been hit on this so I, I hear a lot of like good things being said about them for, for a couple of the colors that I have I'm not as enthusiastic as I am as other people um but this color I I'm enthusiastic about this color um and for this I knit it on a five millimeter needle so it's a lot looser gauge but I don't think you can tell can you see through your, the back there if I put my hand <laughs> Um, I don't think you can tell that it's like massively loose or looser than you would typically hold. It's a looser gauge than you would typically have or make a garment out of when you hold a fingering with a mohair. I'm pure rambling about <laughs> the gauge on this, but I'm rambling because I love the gauge on this. This is the most perfect gauge for me um, to use the woolly knit um, for play on because I am not a fan of like stiff non-drapey garments and with the woolly knit you really really run the risk of making a garment like that if you knit it at a tighter gauge than this. Um, case in point my Ingrid sweater which was far too tight a gauge for the woolly knit for me personally. I held two strands together and I think it was a 4.5 millimeter um, and that's just a no for me. I have worn it when it's really cold but at the end of the day it's not my favorite um, and compared to this it's like night and day. Um, so that's my first one. I'm sorry I'm not putting these on, um, but honestly, um, I live in a foreigner block in Glasgow um, and I don't, I, I'm sure foreigner blocks is only really common in Glasgow um, and basically it's one like building split into four different flats so there's like two bottom flats, two top flats and on the street it's all foreigner blocks and you can, everyone can see into everyone's window um, which is so annoying because you always have to have the blind shot, you never have any natural daylight. Um, but for this I have put my blind all the way up. Everyone can see it right into my window and see me film. So I, I've decided not to keep getting changed. Um, but anyway, so this is my second version. Again this is 
Willy Net British Four Ply held together with a drop skid silk. Um, it is the Woolly Knit in Corvette Blue and the Drop Skid Silk in Cobalt Blue. It, they're not a direct match, you can see that that's like mottled. Um, I'm not adverse to a mottle. Um, I was online, these look like a perfect match in person not a perfect match which is fine i i have had that on all of my woolly knit clothes they look completely different in person than well not completely that's an exaggeration <laughs> they look different in person than they do online um which is annoying so be wary if you're wanting to, to order from them you know be open to not getting the color that you are choosing online um, be cautious if you're worried about that. Um, so again, I did everything the same. I mismatched the measurements and, and um, stitch count from one, two and three, size one, two and three, same gauge. Um, the only thing that I changed was, let's see if you can see this. Can you see anything? <laughs> Maybe not, it's quite dark. So for the armhole, well, so if you're, if you've done a v-neck or not done a v-neck before, basically every round you, or typically it's a, a centered decrease. Is that what it's called? A double centered decrease maybe. Um, where you decrease out two stitches. Um, and it, I love that decrease, it's so clean. Um, so I thought I'm going to do that on the armholes to, you know, bring it in so it doesn't stick out at the armpit, which is kind of annoying having that extra fabric there. So I decided to do that on the armpit instead of every round, I did it every other round just in case, like, I didn't want it to bring in it, like, um, make the circumference too small because I, I did like the... I did like the circumference of the armholes, but I didn't like the sticky out bit. So I didn't want to, you know, make it too small. So I did it every other round and that was perfect. I highly recommend doing that. Um, it makes a perfect fit. Um, and I love this one too. Uh, I'm going to end it there because I've talked a lot about these. <laughs> so that is my Stockholm V-neck, which I love. So let's move on to, I honestly cannot tell you how much I have got here. Um, I'm going to quickly whiz through a couple of accessories that I need for winter that I haven't shared yet. They are all behind me. <laughs> so let's start off with Sophie shawls. I've knit two. I've also knit um, a Sophie scarf. I think I maybe showed this, so I'm not going to go through that because um, I think I've showed that. Um, I'm going to go through these though. So I knit an Aros, 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 Aros <laughs> sweater by Petite Knit um, and I massively overbought a yarn. I don't know why or how or maybe I bought the yarn without knowing the jumper that I was going to knit. That's probably the reason actually, yes that is the reason. <laughs> So I had a lot left over. Um, I knit a pair of gloves, which I will show you. And I also knit a Sophie scarf or shawl. Um, like many, I only bought the Sophie scarf and I basically guessed what the Sophie shawl would be. Basically the only difference is a different gauge, I believe and a different rate of increases. I looked at the Sophie shawl and I went, I'm not paying um, like more money to know like when I, I can quite easily guess um, the different modifications to make the Sophie shawl. Um, yeah, so that's what I did. I, the, what, the reason why I've knit, well, three really of these is because you can weigh the balls before you start, then weigh them as you go so you know 
that you have used up half of the bowl when you get to the middle and then you can finish it and you know that you are going to use every last bit of the yarn that you've bought. The same reason why I'm loving toe up socks now is the fact that you don't have to guess um, how much yarn you're going to have left over and you know you can really use it all up and not have scraps left over which is amazing. So that's the reason why I made another one of these. Um, yeah, that, this is what it looks like. <laughs> so, um, I love this because it's like a triangle. You can really use the point to like go like <laughs> that's what I walk about. Like, it's like this. Um, when it's super cold. Um, I love these. Um, yeah. Not much to say, it's a really, this is, um, I should say, a uh, drop tail packet held together with drops kid silk. Um, really lovely. This is, was a couple of mini skeins that I got as a Christmas present for my sister. Um, I think there were six mini skeins, I've got no hair in my mouth now. Six mini skeins by Ching Fiber. Cannot remember the names. I think maybe one was called Birthday Cake, and then I have no idea what the other ones are called. They're very similar, so I decided to do a fade. So let me show you. Um, annoyingly, this color and this color is the same color. But look how different they look. That's not the same colour, do you know what I mean? Um, I think they faded pretty nicely together. I think it's, you know, it's, it's pretty, pretty good. And I do like, at the end, these two colours together. Um, so when you tie them up, you know, I like how... <laughs> I like how the colours play together, which is good. Um, I held this together, and um, so it was the mini skeins was like the four ply sock, whatever that's called, and I held it together with leftover Ching Fiber mohair that I had um, left over from my um, wedding cardigan um, that I knit that I never got to wear because it was one of the hottest days of the year, um, my wedding day. Um, so that was amazing being able to knit like a whole shawl scarf thing using just chin fibre. So this is like super luxurious to me. This is like, you know, when you see like proper YouTubers who have like proper um, hand dyed skeins. Um, I feel like a proper like <laughs> a YouTuber knitter um, having this. Um, so I love these. I wear them all the time. Um, you know, don't be surprised if I knit another five. <laughs> so that's my Sophie shawls, and then I'm gonna show quickly show um two gloves that I made. These are these are the timeless gloves by Pearl Soho. Um. If you look very quickly at them, they look like the penny gloves, um, but this is a free pattern. It was actually, um, somebody commented in my video, like, probably over a year ago now, saying, like, uh, try out these gloves. Um, I, don't even th I don't even think they were saying it as, like, oh, these are a dupe for the penny gloves, you know, knit these instead. Um, I think it was just like, you should try these out. And then when I looked at them, I was like, they are like the penny gloves. <laughs> um, so again, I knit this with the drop cell packer that I had left over from my Aros sweater, however you say that. Um, I have worn these to death. Well, not to death, but I wear these. Like, I really wear these. Now, the yarn has started to show, you know, to peel and show wear. But look, I blocked these once. I have worn these well over like 
well over 30 times since. Um, and look, we've just stayed in the same shape. Like how cool is that? I scrunch these up, I put it in my bag, I wear them. And they have just not taken on any other shape than, you know, when they were blocked. Do you not think that's really interesting? So that said, I love these. I'm definitely going to make another pair. I have a couple of like special little skein, uh, like balls of yarn that, um, oh, I've got my hair everywhere. <laughs> um, that would just be perfect for these. And because I wear these all the time, I'm just like... I'm just gonna make more and I, I know I'll wear them. My next pair of gloves was a self draft and I, for college, I bought a couple, let me, okay. <laughs> I bought um, a couple of cones of yarn from Ye Yeoman, or Yeoman, or Yeoman yarns um, for a project. And to get free shipping, I had to spend like five more pounds, which was like the same amount that the shipping would be. So I bought one skein of Lamana or something like that. Um, a ball of that yarn, which is Angora yarn. It is so buttery soft. Um, or I, I can actually show you what these gloves look like on <laughs> so buttery soft um, and I'd been keeping it just for a little project and I just thought I'm gonna make another pair of gloves um, it was too thick to make the timeless gloves so I just self-drafted um, just like your bog standard fingerless glove and I love them they're not as long as these so if I'm not wanting a, a pure long, um, like look how long these are. If I'm not wanting like a pure long glove, I wear those ones instead. Um, so they both have a place. <laughs> uh, and that's the glove side, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> the pile that I have here. Um, I also knit this, which which is a free pattern by um, somebody that I cannot pronounce their name or like um, business name. Uh, what would you call that? I don't know. Anyway, um, it was a free pattern, but I changed a lot of stuff. So this is a little neck thing. I, I, I don't know what you'd call it. A lot of people call it different things. So it's just one of these. <laughs> I think it looks so funny when you don't have it on underneath the coat. And <laughs> um, this is Knit and Drops Air. One ball, I believe. Yeah, one ball. Was it? Oh, I don't know now. Um, but I changed quite a lot. So on the original, it's a free pattern. I don't know if I said that, but it is written in a different language. Maybe I have spoken about this before. Hmm. Maybe I have. Um, written in a different language. If you Google um, PDF translate Google, there's like a whole thing in Google where you just like put in a PDF, click translate, and it gives you the PDF back in, you know, whatever language you wanted it in. And it worked so well. Um, I, w I managed to knit the pattern from it. Um, so, you know, it translated it well enough for me to read the pattern. One thing that I changed was they started at the front, knit up, cast off these stitches, did the decreases, then knit down the back. I started from the back, I knit up, um, I put the, the neck stitches on hold so there were still live stitches. I knit across, did some short rows, knit the increases, cast on these stitches, knit down the front, picked up the stitches and the live stitches for the neck, knit the neck, and that was it done. 
Um, I could have easily have knit it. There was nothing wrong, obviously, with the first way it was knitted. Um, but for me, knitting it that way was just a little bit easier because you have those live stitches. You don't need to... I, I don't like casting on new stitches at the neckband, doing like the thumb um, increase thing. I don't like picking those kind of stitches up. <laughs> So I just thought I'll knit it this way and it'll be easier, less stitches to pick up, etc. So I would highly recommend this pattern. So fast, obviously, big chunky needles um, works really well. I wish I'd knit the neck on small, a lot smaller needles slash less stitches because it does flop about and it's not really up at my neck. But I can still fold it off and like sort of hold it over my face and it works well, super warm, effective, would recommend. So these are all my, oh no it's not, <laughs> there's so many little things to like get through. So my next finished, ob finished object, I actually, I finished all of those ages ago. I only finished this like maybe two weeks ago. So relatively new um, whip, um, finished object. Um, it is a, so I am planning on over the course of the whole year, um, whenever I feel like casting on a small project or just having like a break from like jumper knitting, which is the majority of my projects um, is jumper knitting. Whenever I'm feeling like, let's knit something small, I am going to build up a, a whole like collection of gift knits that I can give out at Christmas. Um, because I do not like the whole um, racing to get loads of knits finished for Christmas, so I thought I'm going to space that out. That way I can knit like accessories that I wouldn't really wear or you know interesting ones that I want to knit but I wouldn't wear them um, and you know be ready for Christmas so um... <laughs> hi Faith Kuna I'm filming I'm filming I'm filming. Oh. Okay. I don't think I don't think you can pick it up from there, Kuna. Okay. So, <laughs> um, that's Karina back. Um, so I cut that bit out, and I will start again by saying disclaimer: this one's for my mom. So if you're watching, click away. This is for your Christmas. Um, I know it's a long way away, but even still. So this this is the shift by Andrea Maori. Look how colourful this is. <laughs> Not something that I would wear, which is why I really wanted to knit this because um so let's start off by talking about the yarn because that's really um the inspiration for knitting this. Um okay, here it is. <laughs> I have also um, oh, started and almost finished um, a second one. <laughs> so, the yarn. Let me show you. So, all of these yarns have been like, weirdly enough, given to me by... Three separate people. Um, no, two separate. No, three separate people. <laughs> All of them aunties. So, um, I forgot that I had an actual skein of it here. So, 
This is the yarn. Can you read that? <laughs> oh my gosh, I've got an orange light here. <laughs> so it's maybe making it look weird. This is... Can you read any of this? I don't know. The, um, the Little Orkney that I should. This is 100% North Ronald Sea Wool, it's a 4 ply. Um, it does not give a yardage on here. Online it says basically roughly 350 metres for 100 grams, which uh, is a sport weight really. Um, this pattern calls for a sport weight, so perfect. Um, obviously you can see that um, they're all like crazy colours which lends well to this pattern too. Um, so these two I got from one auntie um, she was de-stashing um, a, uh, a couple of, well a big bag of yarn um, and these two were in it um, which is amazing. I mean these are really 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 lovely yarns, such good quality. Um, I got this one from another auntie maybe two or three or four, three years ago. Um, just one skein, I don't think she knew what to do with it so I happily happily um, received that. And this was another one and I got this as a Christmas present this year from another auntie. So <laughs> weird, um, weird turn of events there. Is that the right phrase? I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, I have wanted to knit a, um, a shift for a long time. It just looks so fun, but I'm not a big fan of this like shape. I'm also like, obviously it uses spin cycle, far too expensive for me. Um, and the, the sort of well-known dupe for it is like the shop of the blub blub. I, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> like crazy Zalba ball um, situation. But um, even that's too expensive. Well, well I, it, it really is. It's too expensive for an, an, for an accessory. And, um, and it's a little bit too thin. So I would have had to have knit it on even smaller needles and it would have taken so long. Um, and even then, like, they don't have many really muted colours. So it would still have been quite um, a colourful thing. Anyway, all that to say, I finally made one. I think this is... Can you see? This is, like, how it's meant to be worn, is it? <laughs> it's actually quite a nice fit. It's a lot nicer than the white, but um, the yarn is really lovely. It's definitely a rustic, but it's a soft rustic. Um, when you knit with it, it is still like it. You can tell, obviously, it's dyed, so you can tell that it has been like washed, and it's not like loads of like oil in it or anything like that. But as you knit with it. You can tell when this is washed, it's going to soften and bloom and sort of all the stitches are going to lie perfectly where you want them to be, kind of a yarn. Um, I'm sure you, you know what I mean by that. Um, so when I was washing and blocking it, I was just so excited because when it was finished, it was exactly the fabric I thought it would be in the best way. So um, let me see the bob. <laughs> Um, it's bouncy, it's nice and drapey, but it's thick and warm. So my mum lives in Orkney now, she moved up to live in the cottage um, two years ago, just under, just under two years ago maybe. Um, 
and she goes walks on the cliff and all that stuff and it's super cold um as you could imagine Orkney is um so I thought she's super colourful you know pink hair and all of that um so I thought you know it's perfect such a good match um and she'll wear it and it'll be warm and she'll get used out of it so <laughs> that's that um what else I'm sure no I think that is everything um it's just so much <laughs> all around me <laughs> so much um so let's move on to whips um let me start with um the most exciting whip for me the whip that's like reinvigorated my knitting mojo and this is here <laughs> oh my god there's so many balls this is a jumper that I've wanted to knit for a long time let's that is such an ugly stage where it's like I finished like the body well I'm not finished the body um I've switched from the body to the neck um so it's all scrunched on needles and the arms are rolling in so it's a little ugly top line at the moment but I wonder how much you'll be able to see Can you see anything? <laughs> so this is the Gia, the Gia Zipper Sweater, I think is the full name, by Sandner's Gang Ria, um, in one of their, um, you know, little book, pattern books. Um, this is in the Soft for, Soft for Women one. The one that's like super popular it's got like the amy vest um what else yeah um so i've had it for a wee wee while wanting to knit the amy vest but um i didn't realize how i mean it's not a small small cage for the amy vest but it's smaller than you know i thought and then i didn't have the yarn for it so i would have had to have bought the yarn <laughs> I sort of, you know, I've benched it for next, like, autumn, winter, so I, when I finish it, I can get, um, <laughs> stuff on my mouth, mohair and everything just gets everywhere, um, when you're pulling stuff off. Anyway, so, yes, I thought, I'll, I'll leave it, I'll knit it at a later date when, you know, maybe wait until a nice yarn is on sale or something like that but um I've wanted to knit I mean at the moment I'm sort of liking not jumping on trends but um sort of you know getting a lot of inspiration from what everyone's knitting um there's a lot of comfort in sort of to a degree a decision being taken out of your hands that's not like the exact right way to put it but especially at the moment where I'm really struggling like oh I was really struggling to think what can I knit to be able to like go on Instagram and see look at all these people making sweaters with zips in and then to just go I'm gonna make one too. Um, there's just something like easy about that and also the fact that you know I do actually like it I'm not just knitting it for like to be trendy. <laughs> so this is the one that I decided to knit. Um, obviously a lot of people are knitting or have knit the petite knit zipper, zipper sweater and um, obviously the Crea Bear has just 
brought out and I'll, and I'll get my zipper sweater um, as well but my favourite one out there is this one because now it is dark yarn so you can see it in person but basically you know it's got shaping like this so like the the part that you zip up it, it's like a real design feature which is my favourite one that's out there as I said <laughs> so yes I want I've wanted a buoy jumper for ages um and I've been eyeing up the drops navy um the drops navy mohair and the um so these are <laughs> all over the place now <laughs> these are the yarns that I'm using um I don't know if you can see how good a match these are which um is very rare <laughs> to be able to get such a good match um but I, I did it so this jumper calls for a double knit held with a mohair um I looked on so drops Flora um is like 65% wool and 35% alpaca or the other way around and drops also have like I think it's drops lima and drops something else which is the same wool like yarn content or fibre content just in thicker yarns so the DK weight of like version of flora essentially didn't have a good match for this mohair which is annoying because then I had to get the flora um, which means I have to hold three yarns together instead of two which is annoying but it's fine because I got such a good match so that's fine um, so I got that um, I've been wanting to knit a navy jumper for the longest time and also I've been wanting to knit another jumper like I, that I can wear around the house that is super warm the one that I wear all the time at the moment is the chestnut sweater again by petite knit and it's super warm nicely oversized with a turtleneck and um, a big turtleneck and um, so when it obviously it's cold in the house mostly and um, trying not to put heat on etc so to have that like big bulk of like warmth around your neck which is like the part that like gets the coldest <laughs> it feels really nice but that's my only one and I'm kind of sick of wearing like the same like one or two jumpers all the time so I thought this is perfect I will wear it around the house so much and I will love it um, and those are my favourite knits where you're just knitting it it's fun to knit but also you know this is gonna serve like you know a big purpose and I will wear it all the time and um, so that's why I chose this what else to say about it um okay I had a palaver with Gage so I have like I started this um I had knit a whole it's drop sleeves so I knit the whole of the back the whole of the front I joined in the round I'd knit like maybe an inch or two on the body and then I, w I was trying it on um, obviously all the way through that process and I was like this looks a bit small like I wanted it to be nicely oversized not too oversized so that I could keep the warmth um, but also not too small that it just looks like an in-between like not fitted not oversized kind of a thing um, and it got to that point I was like I'm gonna cut my losses and start again um, because I really wanted it to be perfect you know yarn's expensive I, I, I'm gonna get so much wear out of this that losing like a couple of days of knitting is, is fine so I started again but I also started um, in a different gauge so this is knit on a very tight gauge um, 
for a DK or held to the Muha. I read everyone's project notes on Ravelry <laughs> and so many of them said, well actually there's only a handful, but a couple of them said, um, you know, a really tight gauge, the yarn wasn't very happy being knit at such a tight gauge. Um, and so I took that on board um, and I just went up a whole needle size. I don't know if you could hear that. <laughs> it's pretty loud. So I went up a whole needle size and I also went up like a size in the pattern too. So this one's a lot bigger than my first one, um, which is what I wanted. So I'm very happy that I did that. Um, I'm worried I'm going to run out of yarn though. So I hope I don't need to order more because then, you know, oh, spending more, it hurts me. Spending so much <laughs> money in general. Um, but I will get a lot of use out of this, so I'll do it if I have to. But I'm going to play yarn chicken to the very end. <laughs> Um, I cannot remember what I was saying. Oh, I have made a couple of like relatively big modifi modifications. That's an exaggeration. So, drop shoulder. You cast on for the back. Short rows, knit down. Pick up, short rows. Neck shaping. Join knit in the round. Then you pick up, knit the double, um, like the double tabs, and then the double for the neck. <sighs> I'm confusing myself even. So in the pattern, I hope this isn't really giving it away. For the pattern on the back, you cast on, then your first row you only knit across to here and then you start doing the short rows and that's fine but that means where your short rows like are one of them is going to end like one of them is going to be exactly on the cast on on the other side it's going to be on one row like it's going to be on the first row of knit stitches not on the cast on um, which is fine, but I really wanted like the most clean finish I could get. So I knit across one row, broke the yarn, slipped like, you know, the amount of stitches to like go up to like the first, where the first short row would be, joined a new yarn, knit the short rows. <laughs> then for the front, one of them, the same problem is that one of them, the short rows would be on the pick up, one of them would be on the first knit row. So I decided to do the same thing essentially is one of them, you know, I was doing the short rows on the knit row, then on the other side I decided to knit the pick up with the sh <laughs> This kind of only makes sense if you've done it and um, I'm not going to explain it really well. <laughs> for the other one I picked up the stitches with the short end of the yarn, you know, slid the stitches to the other end and then started knitting with like the working yarn. That way both of the short rows um, were on the first knit row instead of the pick up row. And I think I'm going to do this from now on, like, I know it's dark yarn and it's getting dark outside. But you really, like, you have a hard time knowing where that pickup was. If you were a non-knitter, you know, I, d I don't know if you'd, like, know. Again, you know, you can't do that with machine knit. Um, you can't get, like, such an invisible, like, seam like that. So I love working with, um you know, when you work with a material, you don't try and mould that material into what you want it to be. You work with that material to bring out what that material wants to be. 
that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Um, because that's like a big thing for me when I work with textiles is like, you've got to pick the right medium. Like if you're wanting like an inky, splodgy, like wishy-washy kind of effect, you'd use like watercolor or ink. If you're wanting like a clean line, you're gonna use like fine liners. If you want a clean line with watercolour, you've kind of got to really like strangle the watercolour into doing what you want it to be instead of just letting it be what it wants to be. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Anyway, I will end it there. Um, oh, although I will say this, um, this pattern obviously is in a booklet, like a pattern booklet and it has, it doesn't hold your hand at all. You need to have, I, I would say you need to have done all of the, um, what's the word, like all of the steps before, like to know, okay, that's what they mean by that. I had to read like so many project notes just to like understand like something that could so simply be, like could so easily be explained, like, but because, you know, they don't have much space in a magazine to write instructions, I think that's why it's so basic. Um, so I wouldn't recommend this for your first or second or third or fourth jumper. Um, but once you get it, it's like, oh, of course that's what they mean. But I really had to read through the whole pattern so many times to really get a grasp on what they meant. It also reminds me, reminded me of something my granny said. So let me put this back. So I decided, um, my granny was like the person that taught me how to knit and was like a prolific knitter um, and sock knitter and knit all my jumpers when I was a kid and all of that. Um, and for my, I think it, it was my second pair of socks. Um, she used to get like, um, back in the day, I don't know if these are still a thing, but you'd get like knit magazines that were like proper magazines that you'd get from like, you know, a corner shop or whatever. And it would just have like a couple of patterns in and, you know, lots of writing and all of that, like a proper like just magazine, um, not like the like Sandra Scan booklet patterns that you get, like just like a magazine. Um, Anyway, I seen a sock, a sock design in one of those and I thought I want to knit that, it looks so cute and it had like a lace, it started off with a lace bit. I've never done lace before, I don't know why I decided to knit that um, but she was like go for it um, and for my first sock, um, <laughs> I must not have, I, I believe it was me that made the mistake and I didn't read it properly which is the most plausible mistake but I was showing it to my granny and I was like you know what's gone on and she was like oh um the patterns in these magazines aren't the best I always find mistakes with them and I always find that they're not written very well um obviously very different to the Sanders Gam books and stuff like that that you get now um but I just you know heard her voice going you know oh it's the magazines and they're, they're not written very well um, but I don't believe that's the case nowadays, like, maybe back then it wasn't such a thing to get, you know, contested or, or really properly proofread. I believe it was my mistake, but still it, it just made me laugh because I thought of my granny saying like, oh no, the, the magazine patterns aren't great. <laughs> anyway, um, so let's move on to my next couple, my last couple of whips. So again, these are not gift nets, but um, my mum and dad have tasked me with knitting them both a jumper. They put in their orders, they bought the yarn for it and I've just to knit it. <sighs> I've been on a journey with these. When I started like when they asked me, I was like, yeah, that's fine. I was like, right, I'm really gonna, you know, power through these and get it done. 
really really fast and I'm not gonna lie maybe this was like six six months I can't talk maybe this was six months ago I'm gonna have some water that they asked me to knit this and I've still not finished Um, it took a while for me to get the yarn um, let me start off with the first one so this is a loopy jumper um, by I cannot remember I will link it below because oh god so this is it a proper traditional um like pattern like color work pattern but um in not really traditional colors my mom chose the colors and i sort of put them together and decided you know what part is going to be what color um i mean it's nice knitting with colors that i wouldn't usually knit with but it's the yarn. I, I've i got a lot to say about this yarn. So this is Lopi um, Alifoslopi. Alifo, I'm so bad. It's this yarn. If that focuses. It is by Lopi obviously and it is 100 grams is 100 meters so it, and it's pure new wool and um, so it's proper like you know it's thick chunky rustic loopy wool single ply and um, I'm sure you've all heard of like uh, let loopy um, and stuff like that so from the same people probably the same like um, fiber and all of that so this is knit on, uh, for me get engaged is 7mm needles, then for the colour work I went up for, to an 8mm needle, um, oh god fibre everywhere, <sighs> you'd have thought like knitting was, knitting with such chunky yarn, um, that it would go fast but honestly if this was knit in like a four millimeter needle I would have had this finished like so much faster the yarn for every stitch you had to you know move it make a stitch move it make a stitch there's no rhythm the yarn is it's quite toothy so the yarn was getting stuck the yarn was getting stuck on the knitting I had to you know pull it off the knitting it's color work so you know I, I knit one English and one continental for color work um I find that really fun actually like that's not really the issue the issue was that the yarn is so grippy it was getting stuck I had to really maneuver it around it's quite a stiff fabric so it was just like staying there and it wasn't like it didn't want to be maneuvered around um so it, it was a real like it, it was really hard um i'm excited to, um to see the finished object and i've done most of the color work really but um my row gauge was like wildly off and also on the pattern anyway the arms end like so far down and i know that she wants to wear this like under a coat so i had to change it so the arm was up but in doing so that meant the, it was halfway halfway through the color work design so then I, I've had to like change it around a little bit so I can relatively neatly do it on the arms and and the body and not make it look like a mistake so um it's been a headache basically but um if I'm being realistic, also it's really hurting my hands um, and so was the other one that I'll show you. So being realistic, I am aiming to do this for like, ne like next winter slash like the end of this year. If I put a deadline on myself, I'm like, right, I'm going to do it. 
I'm not gonna do it. Um, I feel bad because they bought the yarn and all of that, but honestly, like, I just can't do it. <laughs> I, after this, I am not taking on any orders from anyone to knit anything. Like, I will gladly do this, obviously, like, I wouldn't have said I if I wasn't gonna do it. But after this, I am not knitting for anybody unless it's like something that doesn't need to be fitted to their body i.e. like gloves or like an accessory or something like that because that just adds in a whole like anxiety but really nice to knit with I mean this yarn is like expensive um, so it's nice to knit with like good quality like yarn that you see other people knit with and it's like you know it's exciting to knit with new yarn and to see what other people see and, and all of that so that there are positives obviously knitting it but the color work was really difficult like on my hands and my brain <laughs> um so that's that my next um jumper that i'm knitting so that one's for my mum and this one's for my dad. Um, so he gave me a jumper that um, he liked, um, that he wore to death and he said I want this but um, obviously hand knit and in these colours. Um, and I was like do you want to pick out a pattern and he was like no just like freestyle it whatever it doesn't you know just see what you can do by looking at the jumper basically and I was looking at so this is this this is it and um, it's so scrunched up and um, this is it so um I was looking at the jumper it's like an old Zara jumper actually Um, I was looking at how it was constructed Um, it looked like a very simple like drop shoulder construction with like increased the arm so kind of a hybrid of like it looked like a set in sleeve but it was a drop shoulder um yeah if you can imagine what that looked like um I was looking at it and I was thinking how can I do that um and I was like do you know what the terrazzo sweater kind of looks like you know very similar because um it, it is a raglan so it's not a drop shoulder but it is like that set in sleeve kind of a look um it's quite dark it's getting dark out i mean it is dark outside so i don't know if you can see anything um but it is a saddle shoulder um raglan in increases um and it looks pretty much exactly the same and i was like I'm going to take this out of my hands and uh, <laughs> I'm just going to follow a pattern. However, I changed absolutely everything about the pattern. <laughs> I changed the cast on the stitches, I changed the rate of increases, I changed the depth of the armhole, I changed the stitch counts for everything. Um, so that took up a lot as well because I had to keep on they laying it on top of the old jumper then they're ripping back laying it on ripping it back you know trial and error i finally got the yoke right and i'm knitting the body and i need to knit the arms and and see what the decrease like the decrease that the decrease rate um will be for the arms and the length of the body but apart from that like the hard part is done the only thing that's stopping me knit on this is the yarn. The yarn is 100% um, acrylic. Uh, let me find um, the um, this is it. So it is a hobby or hobby or whatever yarn. Uh, it's called Fluffy Day. Um, and it kind of gives that like brushed alpaca mohair feel. He wanted a very, like he wanted specifically yarn exactly like this. 
because that is what the jumper is made out of, like his old jumper is made out of. And I looked for a while and actually he was the one that found this. <laughs> but it is perfect, like it's absolutely bang on what we wanted. Um, but I am not, the, not a fan of knitting with acrylic because of the way it feels and the noises that it makes. Um, it is probably the, well it is the nicest acrylic yarn that I have ever knit with. So if you're into acrylic yarn and you're wanting a dupe for um, like a brushed alpaca really or a mohair, this is what you want. This is like exactly what you want. Um, but um, oh, it's, the, it's the noise and the fact that it really hurts my hands that's made me slow down on that. Um, but apart from that, like I've I've, it's fine like I've, I've done the hardest part I just need to knit it now um but just like because I've like I went off, I didn't go off knitting what's the word like I lost my mojo so I didn't want to knit on something that wasn't like really really bringing me joy or like that I wasn't really really obsessed with so that's why those two have gone like untouched for a couple of months um so yeah that's that i'm excited to get those finished i think the plan is just to knit little and often or little and little <laughs> um and hopefully they should knit themselves um if you know what i mean um i also have realized that i missed out an fo a finished object and um, so i'm going to quickly show you now um they are scrunched up because I wore them and they are in the washing pile <laughs> but and they're like they've been stretched out <laughs> um, can you see very nice very nice um lovely heel <laughs> these are the I'm ecstatic socks by cool cool stitches um, I first found her because she did a reel of her making buttons then I looked at her stuff and I seen that she had a couple of patterns and they pay what you like so that's amazing um, I got those because I had leftover mohair and also I had um, that one random skein of um, Ching Fiber Fuhr which is in this colour, which I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe they sent me the wrong colour than what I ordered. So I really have not had a good time with this drop fjord. Um, I looked online and I was like, I found the colour that I ordered. I looked at the other colours and I found a skein that was this colour. And I was like, they 100% sent me, the 100% sent me the other colour, but had labelled it with the colour that I bought, if that makes sense. Anyway, so I held that together. And I don't, I don't know what this colour is because they definitely sent me a wrong colour. And I held it together with um, Drops Kid Silk in Curry that I've had in my stash for the longest time. Um, I was going to make a cherry out of it by Maduri Hirose but I kind of fell out of love with um, knitting garments just in one strand of mohair so I never went back to the pattern. I bought the pattern and everything but I never went back to like really wanting to knit it. I will knit it one day I'm sure but I just thought no, I'm just gonna like play around with this yarn and knit a couple of things of like maybe accessories. I knit a hot water bottle cover using that and a couple of strands of flora. Um, and then it matched um, it matched that other um, fjord colour really nicely. And I wanted to try out socks that um, have mohair in because I have started um, washing my knits in my washing machine. Um, so my washing machine is 
one of those stamps and ones that sings when it's finished its cycle. Um, and when I wash my hand knits, I'll soak it in like no rinse washing liquid and then I'll spin it in the washing machine just on a spin and drain. Um, and so I also, all my socks um, up until recently have been knit with super wash and I would just throw them in my normal washing. I wash everything on a 20 um, so it's not like a really hot wash anyway but a couple of my socks made out of, um, one of them was made out of Countess Ablaze and one of them was made out of Hedgehog Fibres. Those felted a little bit and they're just a tiny bit too small for me and that was enough to make me go, I'm not doing that anymore. So I wear like all of my hand knit socks <laughs> and I do one massive uh, wool wash in the washing machine. What I do, however, is I put it down to 20. Um, I put the spin down a little bit um, and I'll just wash it like that. Um, I decided to pop in a a little like cat blanket that I knit out of like it was drops snow which is like if you know it it's like a single ply basically like a dupe for that Ala for Sloppy actually and um, I put that in to test will this felt and it did not felt at all and I was like that yarn is made for felting so I put in two jumpers and they were absolutely fine so I thought, that's great, I can get away with making um, non superwash socks now, which I'm super excited for. So I was like, I can make those socks and I can wear them and wash them. I'm not like a hand wash my socks kind of a person at all. That's just a step too far. Like putting the washing on is takes a lot of mental energy for me at the best of times. So. I decided to knit these, so I love this pattern, I would recommend this 100% and um, so all of my socks up until now have been knit with um, heel flap and gusset. This one I decided to follow the pattern exactly and do their heel. Um, I believe this is called a, a short row shadow wrap heel maybe um okay i can't remember but it says in the pattern um and i love it i obviously they're cables so it's essentially ribbed so it does stretch and it has a lot of give um but the heel fit me really really nicely so i decided to i've started another pair of socks just in some drops uh fable and I'm trying out the same heel construction but on a sock that's just stuck in it to see how that fits because it was just so much faster, easier, more fun and um, you know different um, than the heel flap and gusset. Also by doing that it doesn't change like the circumference of the stitches like either side of it so if you're doing like um, if it's a self striping yarn, you're not interrupting that, um, which is amazing, like, um, so cool. Um, so yes, I'm trying that out. Um, and that is definitely everything that I want to talk about. I'm gonna quickly talk about a couple of acquisitions and spinning, if you are interested. I'm gonna jump into my spinning um, because I finished a really big spinning project um, these are so I got um three what would you call it like braids I think of Malabrigo their spinning fibre um in three different shades wanting to do like a fade um it's a hedgehog fibre shawl that they put out um, and I fell in love with it and I was like, well, I couldn't afford the hedgehog fibre um, fibre. So I 
got the Malabrigo as like a dupe and I spun it um, and <laughs> I pulled up one big. Um, all of these were like, it was meant to be 100 grams but all of them were like 120 grams um, so I've got a lot more than what I thought I would even get. <laughs> I have the two here, <laughs> I've not pulled up yet. Um, I cannot remember <laughs> what the colours are called, um, but look at that. How amazing is that? So fun. Um, this is the other one. Look at that. Now, <laughs> it turns out that I actually spun this too thin. I think it's Mm, it, it's like a light DK um, or, or a DK really and they're working like more of like a heavy DK to Aaron so if I was to knit that shawl I would knit it on such a like a small gauge I thought it was going to be like a fast knit but it's not going to be a fast knit so I'm, I'm not I've not really got the get up and go about making that into a shawl which is a shame because I really enjoyed spinning it and I love like the finished product um but I've anyway I've got that now and um I, I think I will still knit that shawl but just when I'm when I feel like I can um so that was fun I also um so in Scotland I think um, I don't know if they did this in England. In Scotland, like last summer, uh, we got something called like, well, in Glasgow, it was a Glasgow Lugs like card. And basically it's um, like a gift card, but um, there was £105 on it. Everyone, every household got one. Um, and you, you, it's to like encourage um, spending it on like high street shops, like um, shops in person. Why can't I explain this? <laughs> it's to like encourage you to go out and, and spend it in the shops, like actually physically in person. And um, I, I've not spent it yet and um, I couldn't really find like, I really wanted to find a place where it like I could spend it on something that I would never, like a treat that I would never spend my own money on because it was too expensive. Um, and I was looking again at like all the shops that like accepted this card and the Yarn Cake um, had like, I don't know if I just didn't spot it before or like they'd only just like put themselves on the list of like accepting the card, but anyway, I saw that they accepted the card now and I was like, okay, that's it, I need to go there <laughs> and um, and get some yarn from there. So I eventually, like after months of wanting to go, I eventually went, um, it's called the Yarn Cake in Glasgow and um, I'm pretty sure it's like, re it's really the only yarn shop that does like, I don't mean this in a bad way, but isn't like a crafty yarn shop, i.e. not just like acrylic yarn, um, if you know what I mean. I don't mean that in a bad way, um, but they do like hand dyed yarn, a lot of drops yarn and a lot of West Yorkshire spinners. That's pretty much all that they do, a couple of different other things. Um, and I went in and I thought, I'll buy some a couple like a lot of drops yarn so I can make a good couple of projects. I went in and they'd like sold out of all of the drops yarn. And um, so then I went up to the hand dyed section. Now I'm not really a hand dyed kind of person because one it's expensive and two like sometimes I don't like how it knits up into projects. But I thought like essentially I'm getting them for free so I thought I'm I'm just gonna go for it and like well 
a splurge, but not really splurge because it was a gift card. But anyway, all that to say, I've got three different hand dyed skeins of yarn, um, all different colours. And in the shop, I was like, what am I going to make with these? Like, you see people all the time just buy one skein of hand dyed yarn and not know what to do with it. But I was just like, I'm going to get it. Like, I don't care, I'm just going to get it. <laughs> So if anyone has any ideas, um, my first one is this Dystopic Fibres and I know that this is a little Glaswegian guy um, that dyes this in Glasgow. It is the Golden Scally Cat. It is a, like um, a four ply sock yarn. It is um, 75 superwash merino, 25% nylon. So I, obviously I can make socks with this, but my thought for this was to knit the Spiritual Guardian, Guard, Guardian's Cowl by Cat Weaver. Um, I just need to get some mohair to hold with this. I've wanted to knit that for ages, but I wanted to get like a special yarn for it. So I thought this is perfect. I love this colour. Um, I think orange is kind, kind of goes well with my... Um, ginger hair and complexion. Um, I also got this one which is for the love of yarn. I, I don't know who they are, <laughs> where they die. I, I believe it's Scotland and, and Glasgow. It is this. Is that Ferguson? No? <laughs> so it's 100% Merino Yap Silk Sock. However, it doesn't say like um, the percentages. I, I looked online and it doesn't say the percentage of like, I mean, it's merino yak silk, but it's, it doesn't say like 70% merino, you know, 10%, do you know, anyway. <laughs> uh, it's in the color of straw. I wish I got two skeins of this, but they probably didn't have it. Like they, they didn't really have more than one color skein of one colour so I didn't really have much of a choice but to buy like one-off skeins but this is more of like a dollar colour in real life that they <laughs> it's so dark outside now this is like not showing it right at all but this is like a more muted colour in real life and I would actually wear this as like because it's very variega variegated I would actually wear this as like like a jumper or something. I was actually thinking this would be really nice in a Jessie Mead um, ribbed top, um, but it's not enough on its own, which is annoying. But I also got this colour, um, which is for the love of yarn again, it's the same Maruno silk yak, and it is whiskey tutty. Uh, so pretty, like absolutely gorgeous so pretty and look <laughs> you can definitely tell the colours that I'm loving at the moment <laughs> um, I was also looking at these and I was like that is such like um a Stephen West shawl situation um but I'm not really one for like crazy shawls or anything like that so I don't think I'm gonna make something like that with it um so yeah, um, I don't know what I'm going to do. I've still got um, money left on the card and I'm going to go back and maybe see if they've got the same colourways or something like that. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I'll probably end up just getting even more like one-off skates. <laughs> so yeah, any suggestions? That would be fun. Um, also, my wife has, sorry, this is crinkling, I'm gonna get out. <laughs> I can't open it. My wife, her birthday is coming up next month and she has requested a hat. She wanted like a thin fingering weight hat that's like more just like a cap. What, what I would call like 
a hipster hat that doesn't cover the ears and it's you know it, it's very shallow fits the top of the head like completely snug no like excess fabric um, but she wanted it in a crazy yarn and she loves hedgehog fibres she is the one that um, randomly decides to go on their website and pick out <laughs> colours for me um, and has bought me quite a couple of their skeins because she likes to look at them and she likes to buy me yarn apparently um, but she has always wanted something of her own from their um, yarn but obviously they're really expensive and you know it's, it's really like a special occasion yarn and she said for my birthday can I have a hat made out of this so she picked up this colour I'm sure this will not show the right actually it's it's yeah that's pretty much what it looks like actually so this is the sock it's the 90% merino wool 10% nylon um it is oh no i'm not gonna even try and see that i don't think that's focusing even maelstrom maelstrom i have no idea um but yeah i've done a gauge swatch in some other yarn that's got like the same like fiber makeup and yardage um and I think I found a hat pattern after looking at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of patterns. Um, so I'm going to cast that on as soon as like I'm feeling up for it. She also really liked this colour. Um, she was choosing between these two for a hat, but in the end um, she chose this one. Um, but I thought I would just sneakily throw this into the basket as well and use it as like a contrast for a sock maybe. It's again the sock base and it's in spell. I also was curious as to what this looked like in person because it's so bright online. It's a lot more purple in person I think but it is a stunning colour nonetheless. <sighs> That's all I'm going to talk about. Um, there, there are more things but honestly like I don't know how long this is already and it would just go on and on and on and on forever and also it's dark outside now anyway so um, I'm going to say thank you and I will say goodbye now um, hopefully uh, making this is going to spur me on to make another one soon and uh, hopefully I won't um, you know go away for months and not do anything but I, I want to say in advance like if I don't reply to your comments I'm sorry like honestly I've gotten people that I've not replied to for like like over six months like I honestly like see if I could talk to them in person instead of texting them I would like see texting or like writing stuff like it's so hard to get across like your tone of voice and stuff and I just struggle to like put that into words and, and really go does this sound passive aggressive like I don't want like I don't mean to sound passive aggressive but does it and then it, it brings a whole spiral of like oh my god they're gonna think I'm an awful person um so then I just don't do it at all which is maybe even worse than replying badly I don't know so I want to say sorry in advance if I don't get around to doing that but thank you if you do comment like I really 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 appreciate that it's so nice um, and I can't believe people even take their time to watch this or, or like the video or comment so it's really special to me and um, so yeah thank you again um, and yeah that's everything I hope you enjoyed it I hope you're doing well um, maybe take a little look at that mindful meditation if you're feeling up for it and um, I would recommend it and I will see you soon. <laughs> Bye!